Hello, and thank you for joining me today as we talk about the power of amen. Today we'll be talking about the passage in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, as Jesus uses the word amen to validate what it looks like to give from the heart. And he's going to talk about this from different angles today, but I want to talk about the power of giving. Uh, it's something that is uh, synonymous with what it means to be a follower of Christ, is to give. Give of our time, give of our, our, our strength, give of our resources, no matter what they are. Oftentimes, though, we're talking about giving in terms of money. Well, that's the topic today as we talk about the widow and the two mites that she gave as an act of worship. So as we talk about that today, I hope you're excited to join me, and we'll get right into this passage in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. The passage reads, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box, and he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins, and he said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. Well, church, that's the difference that we're talking about today. You see, Jesus sees the rich, and he also sees the poor, but we don't have any recollection of the rich. Whenever we think about Jesus and what it means to give in the kingdom, obviously we recognize that, that we are prone to make false assumptions about what it means to give, uh, we sometimes feel like the more we can give, the more God looks at that and responds with gladness. But it's really not the truth. The truth is that God doesn't look at the value of our money. He looks at the value of our heart. And that's always going to be true. He says that our heart is what he's most concerned about. It's hard to realize that God doesn't see money the way we do. He doesn't understand or he doesn't attribute the same value or worth that we put on money in our day. And so we recognize the heart as what God really wants from us. And that's the picture we see in this passage. You see, the gift of these two copper coins represents the uh, willingness of this widow, poor widow, to trust in God. Now that is the message today, that Jesus is validating trust in God with the word amen. And so as we talk about that, uh, some people have had thoughts before and, and we're tempted to think that I'll wait to give until I'm wealthy, that way I can give a lot and make a big difference. But that's also not true. We don't see that in the text today, that even two small copper coins can make a big difference in the kingdom because of the heart that they represent. So as we talk about this today, I, I wanna challenge us to think about how Jesus' use of the word amen can help us to think about giving in a way that represents trust in God. So let's talk about it from this perspective. The first thing we realize is that the power of amen is uh, the power to give all. And that's what happens in this story. The rich gave out of their wealth, but this woman gave out of her poverty. She gave all that she had. You know, whenever the widow gives all, we sometimes realize that the wealthy uh, give uh, and, and it makes a good noise. You see, the offerings were put in the offering box, or, or sometimes it was a, a shofar, it was a, a ram's horn, or some kind of a, a vessel that the, the money, these coins that they would throw in, the more you throw in, the bigger the sound. And, and, and so people might throw in the money, and, and, and people look around like, who gave all that money? And they would immediately get recognition for that gift. But you see, these two coins probably wouldn't have caught the attention of anyone. And the truth is that whenever we think about the wealthy making a lot of noise with their gift, the poverty is what Jesus is looking for because he's not looking for the amount of the gift to draw attention to yourself. He's looking for the heart to draw attention to the giver. You see, Jesus loves the cheerful heart. He loves the one who gives, not because of the gift that's given, but because of the heart behind the gift. Because of the heart, we can be sure to give all. We can be sure that he's taking notice, no matter how big or small our gift is. He's taking notice of our heart. 
Well, it's an act of worship. Truly, first of all, giving is an act of worship. And therefore, God is not concerned with the significance of the gift. He's just concerned with the giver. Well, also, that is this heart. The gift is only a reflection. These two small coins are not the reflection of the heart. The fact that she gave all that she had was a reflection of the heart. And finally, it's a demonstration. This demonstration of giving is that our understanding is that everything we have belongs to God. And so giving gives us the ability to make that, de that declaration to the world. I'm giving all that I have because I know that all that I have belongs to God. So when we think about giving, and we think about the widow giving all that she had, we recognize it's worship. It's a picture of the heart, and it's also a demonstration that we trust God that no matter what we have or don't have, it belongs to Him. Well, the next thing that we know is that not only is this a demonstration, it's a heart, it's an act of worship, but think about this. Those two copper coins, they don't mean a lot to the world, but given to God, similar to that, that little boy who showed up on that hillside of 5,000 people needing to be fed. And he had five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus took it and proved that 12 baskets left over is how his kingdom mathematics works. If you think about those two copper coins, now, this is just an, an expression of uh, illustration. If you it, it deposited those two copper coins into the First National Bank of Jerusalem and drew 4% interest semi-annually for uh, the fund today would total 4.8 sextillion. Sextillion. Now that's one with 21 zeros after it. To give you a reference point, a trillion is one with 12 zeros after it. Now think about that. If we could take two copper coins and turn it into 4.8 sextillion dollars, think about what God can do with two copper coins given from a pure heart in his kingdom. And I just want to remind you, it's not the size of the gift. It's the heart behind the gift and the dedication and the demonstration that God owns it all anyway. Well, that's what Jesus is validating with the word amen. And the power of amen gives us the ability to give all we have to God. Well, the next thing is the power of amen gives us the ability to give anything we have to God. Not just all that we have, but anything that we have. And some people might be prone to look around and say, I don't have the right thing to give. But that's not true because when our lives are dedicated to God, Jesus validates with the word amen that this woman's act shows that anything is right to give to God as a demonstration of our trust in him. When we think about this, Jesus calls people to rise to a higher level of living than the law could ever produce. And some people have a, have a problem with the idea of the Old Testament idea of tithing. Well, listen, the tithe is the smallest consideration of gift worthy unto God. Now think about that. If 10% is recognized as the smallest appropriate gift to God, then Jesus shows us in the New Testament that giving everything and anything to God is the new appropriate measure. He showed us this on the cross when he gave his life. He withheld nothing and he gave all of it, surrendered to the Father. And anything, even nails holding hands and feet to the cross, is a gift to God when it's dedicated to him. We give our lives to him. We live in a day when hearts have been filled with so many things other than being filled with the grace of God. And it's no wonder that we struggle with knowing what, it, what is appropriate to give and when is the right thing to give and when is too much to give. I was reading this story. That once again, it, it's the end of the year and every Christian organization badgers its constituents for funds to balance the year's budget. And this year was no different for Miami Christian College as President Pearson reminded the constituents of their need. Well, many were losing patience and the trouble is that the school was always asking for money and 
the president would be the first to say you're probably right. But he said this uh, as a personal story to his people, and I'll share it with you. He said this, I have a little boy, my firstborn. He was a delight to our hearts, but he was always costing me something. He needed clothing, shoes, food, and had special needs that I gladly provided, for he was my son. Then one day he died. It was an experience that I hope you will never have. He does not cost me a dollar now. Every need, listen to this, every need is an unfailing sign of life and growth. Body, mind, and soul have their needs and they must be continually met. A ministry that is continually in need of funds is a ministry that is growing and healthy. Listen, if the church ever stops needing funds, you know that the ministry has died. Not the church, but the ministry has died. And I want to give that as a sober reminder to us that yes, we are constantly asking for gifts to be given to support the ministry of the church. But the reason for that is that I believe and we believe as a church that this is a growing and healthy ministry that has needs. And as we see it that way, we will give anything and everything that we can to support the growing, healthy ministry that God is doing through this body. What a wonderful reminder that Jesus validates by the word amen and saying it's okay to give all and it's okay to give anything for the kingdom. Well, the last thing I wanna to share today is not only all and anything, but the power of amen to give with abandon. I love that idea of this woman just giving everything and just releasing it and seemingly being left with nothing. But according to Jesus, she's been left with everything because she'll never lack in her relationship with Christ. What an abandon to not be afraid, to not count twice and wonder, are we going to make it okay? But to believe that there's an abandon that is able to be experienced because God is faithful. And I know you've realized that in your life, but I wonder if she gave these two small coins that were worth but a fraction of a penny. Listen, God doesn't need our money. As I said at the beginning, he doesn't value money the way we value it. He doesn't think about money the way we think about it. God is not like us in the way he thinks. It says in the scripture that my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. But he desires for us to live with an abandon, to value the things that he values higher and above all other things of worldly worth. Whenever we think about this, she gave her security, all that she had to live on. And probably the most desperate and maybe dangerous part of abandon is security. How do we reconcile giving and then putting ourselves in a maybe a crunch of security? Well, again, God is not saying that, that money in any way is where we should tie our security. He's applauding the gift of this woman because she's giving with a heart to God, trusting that God is her supply and her source. Well, I want to finish with this. I, this is a terrible story, but I want, to, I want to think about this because a lot of people live with the idea that money is something that they have to have and that will follow them later on. There's people in this world that truly believe that our security is in our wealth. The story is that a rich man learned that he would die in a few days. He called his three friends, a doctor, a preacher, and a lawyer, to his bedside. And he said to the preacher, a preacher has told me that I can't take this with me, but I believe I've worked out a way that I can. And the doctor tells me I won't live long, so I've prepared three sealed envelopes, each containing $10,000. When I die, I want each of you to walk by the casket and drop in your envelope with the $10,000. A short time later, they attended his funeral and then met together sometime after the funeral. And the preacher said, I've got a confession to make. We've needed repair on the church organ for a long time, and I took 2000 out of Bill's envelope and used it 
on the organ. And the doctor said, this makes it easier for me because I took out 5,000 and used it for a new clinic. So I only dropped in $5,000. And the lawyer said, well, my conscience is clear. I did just what Bill said. I kept my envelope, picked up both of yours and dropped in a check for the whole amount of $30,000. <laughs> I know that's a terrible joke. But the idea is we can't take it with us. And therefore, if we can't take it with us later for security, then we can't rely on it now for security either. We must be willing to give all. We must be willing to give anything. We must be willing to give with an abandon because our God desires our worship. He desires our heart. He desires our life to demonstrate that we trust in Him, that our security is in Him and in Him alone. Well, that's what this story demonstrates. This poor widow put in two small copper coins. We know more about her in this story than we do about anybody else. And it's wrapped around the power of the word, Amen. Let it be so. And I say that, Amen. Let it be so that the gifts of this body be more than enough to meet the needs of this growing and healthy ministry as God leads us into the future. And would he find the hearts of his people and the worship of his people and the demonstration of faith in the lives of his people to be a glory to him and a witness to this world that we are living in obedience to the desire and the plan of our God and King who reigns forevermore. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, church. God bless all of you that are gathered today to celebrate as we continue to focus on the power of the word amen and think about giving. And I want to encourage you to continue to give even though we've not been meeting on campus. We're looking forward to returning back in public worship on May 31st, which is Pentecost Sunday. So I look forward to seeing you in person, but continue to give your gifts as we believe that this is a growing and healthy ministry as God continues to use us to meet needs and declare the gospel and experience real life change as he leads us as a body. Continue to pray with me, church. I want to pray with you now. Father, thank you for this time to reflect on giving. Thank you for this time to be challenged by your word and challenged by the example of this poor widow who gave two small copper coins. And Father, I pray that you would meet us in that place of vulnerability as we worship you, as we live by faith, obedient to give all, to give everything, and to give with an abandon. And we pray that you'd be glorified above all things. And we pray in the power of Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. I love you, church. And I, and I look forward to seeing you soon. And I pray that God would be with you and continue to meet your needs according to his riches and glory. Have a wonderful day.